Hello, my name is Natalie, your digital presenter for today's event. Before we dive into the exciting and informative content we've prepared for you, here's a quick disclaimer. I'm actually an artificial intelligence AI designed and programmed to assist with sharing valuable knowledge and resources. I am here to provide evidence-based, up-to-date information and guidance and will be sharing real stories from my colleagues at FND. Here at FND, we value honesty and transparency in all our interactions. We at the Family Network on Disabilities believe that the incredible advancements in technology, such as AI, can significantly enhance our ability to provide families with the resources, support, and information they need. All the information shared in this training comes from the dedicated team of experts at F&D who have years of experience, rich understanding, and most importantly, a deep passion for supporting families just like yours. Family Network on Disabilities began in 1985 by a group of parents of children with disabilities who came together looking for mutual support. F&DIS, a grassroots organization for persons with disabilities, and their families that is family-centered and family-driven. What makes F&D unique is that the majority of our board members, our management staff and program staff are either individuals with experience with a disability or have family members with a disability, which gives us the perspective of empathy and compassion for the work that we do. Before we begin, I'd like to share a little bit about Family Network on Disabilities. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization helping families across the state. We're funded in part by the U.S. Department of Education and the U.S. Department of Health through the Health Resources Services Administration. We use all that funding to provide information, resources, and support, and training to families, educators, professionals, and providers throughout the state. We do not charge for our services. At this time, we would like to make a disclaimer that we at F&D are not attorneys, doctors, or mental health professionals. We do not offer legal or medical advice in our workshops. We are happy to support you with information, resources, and support. We use research-based information in our training and materials. Today, we're going to be talking about assistive technology services. So let's get started. We are going to begin this presentation by sharing the definition of assistive technology. Under IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, assistive technology service is defined as any service that directly assists a child with a disability in the selection, acquisition, or use of an assistive technology device. There are three keywords in this definition. We are talking about selection, acquisition, and the use of an assistive technology device. When we talk about all these three, we are talking about individualization because we want to be sure that people understand that as with everything else that happens in the IEP, we are thinking about the child as an individual. In order to determine that the child needs assistive technology, an evaluation must be performed in order to figure out what need can be fulfilled with the use of assistive technology. An assistive technology device is any item, piece of equipment, or product system that can be acquired commercially off the shelf, modified, or customized based on the needs of the child. It can be used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of a child with a disability. Every device of assistive technology is going to be evaluated independently to be sure that it fulfills the needs of the individual based on their unique needs, abilities, and challenges. Sometimes for children with intellectual disabilities, cognitive aids such as computers or electrical assistive devices can help with memory, attention, or other challenges in their thinking skills. Software and hardware such as voice recognition programs, screen readers, and screen enlargement applications can help with mobility and sensory impairments. Utilizing devices that can be bought from the shelf can be modified for the needs of a child. If we think about a calculator, many times we don't realize that when a calculator is used as an accommodation for a child with a disability in the classroom, it's not a simple calculator anymore. It is an assistive technology device. Working it out with the IEP team is crucial as if it's not included in the IEP. A child won't be able to use a calculator. It's going to be something the other kids can't use. 
But once it is defined by the team that the calculator is going to serve as an accommodation for the child to achieve his or her academic goals, then the calculator is approved and the child is going to be able to use this device. Assistive technology is under other free appropriate public education's requirements in the law. The IDE states that each public agency must ensure that assistive technology devices or assistive technology services are both made available to a child with a disability if required as support for the child's special education-related services. Appropriate education may comprise of education in regular classes or education in regular classes with the use of related aid and services. The reason behind all these supports is to enable a child to the maximum extent possible to attend the regular classroom. We want this to be inclusive and to be the least restrictive environment for a child. Every child is unique, but we always want to empower families to understand that when we talk about services and special education, that that includes opportunities to include a child and respect their right to be part of the general education classroom. Special education may include specially designed instruction in classrooms at home or in private or public institutions. This can be accompanied by related services such as speech therapy, occupational and physical therapy, psychological counseling, and medical diagnostic services necessary to the child's education. An appropriate education will include education services designed to meet the individual education need of students with disabilities as adequate as the needs of non-disabled students are met. It also includes the education of each student with a disability with non-disabled students to the maximum extent appropriate to the needs of the student with a disability. Evaluation and placement procedures are established to guard against misclassification or inappropriate placement of students and a periodic re-evaluation of students who have been provided with special education or related services. The education market is dominated by Chromebooks. Most of the schools in Florida use Chromebooks. Utilizing a Chromebook will allow a child to utilize compatible software. In the upcoming slides, there are a couple applications that will function these devices. An important reminder is that most applications have Windows and Apple compatibility. So if they have a different kind of computer, prefer different devices at home, We'd recommend you do a brief Google search to see if the assisting software for your child is available on the devices you prefer. In the next few slides, we are going to be reviewing the common applications that the school district uses for helping children with disabilities. Many times, these applications are available in the district students' computers, but sometimes the district, school, local agency may not have been trained on how to activate, enable, or use these applications. So the idea behind this is for families to be aware that these applications exist and what they can do for their children and how it can help. Our recommendation is for you to try to download the applications and play with them to get a feel for them. The first one is Read and Write. Wonderfully intuitive and easy to use, Read and Write for Google Chrome provides personalized support to make documents, web pages, and common file types in Google Drive including Google Docs, PDF, and EPUB more accessible. It is designed to help everyone engage with digital content in a way that suits his slash her abilities and learning styles. There is a huge opportunity for inclusion, self-autonomy, and independence that this extension can bring to the life of students with disabilities. Read and Write offers a range of powerful support tools to help you gain confidence with reading, writing, studying, and research, including text to a speech to hear words, passages, or whole documents. Read aloud with easy to follow, dual color highlighting, text, and picture dictionaries to see the meaning of words explained. With speech to text, dictate words to assist with writing, proofreading, and studying. Word prediction offers suggestions for the current or next word as you type. It can collect highlights from texts and documents, or the web for summarizing and research, as well as create and listen to voice notes directly inside of Google Docs. It's important to keep in mind that assistive technology is always a bridge to learning and excelling in education. It has many benefits, and it's about helping the child keep on track and actually maximize his or her abilities. Here we have read aloud, 
Read aloud the current web page article with one click using text to speech. Supports 40 languages. Read Aloud uses text to a speech technology to convert web page text to audio. It works on a variety of websites, including news sites, blogs, fan fiction, publications, textbooks, school and class websites, and online university course materials. Read Aloud can help students with intellectual disabilities and students with learning disabilities such as dyslexia. Children will be able to select from a variety of text to speech voices. Choosing a voice they'd like to hear can include voices provided natively by the browser, as well as by text-to-speech cloud services providers, such as Google, Amazon Polly, IBM, and Microsoft. Some of the cloud-based voices may require additional in-app purchase to enable. There are paid options alongside many free options. Usually, all these applications are completely free or they are available for the school system paid by the school district. The next application is going to be voice in voice typing. It is a dictating application and it is very helpful for families. From dictating emails, tweeting you thoughts, or learning pronunciations, voice in makes it easy to type your messages quickly and efficiently using the power of your voice. You can voice to text to dictate your messages in any text box in any website. Something unique about assistive technology is that it is such a great tool to promote inclusion in the community because as we talk about these applications and we advocate for the use of assistive technology, we can remind others that everyone can use these. Having a disability or not, you can use text-to-speech and is likely a feature on your cell phone. So we are not only using something to give the child more opportunities to progress or to excel academically, we are actually giving the child inclusive tools that they are going to be accessible at any moment and that may come help form important life skills when using other technology. This next one is going to be specifically for children with dyslexia and it's called Open Dyslexic. Open Dyslexic is an open sourced font created to increase readability for readers with dyslexia. This extension overrides all fonts on web pages with the Open Dyslexic font and formats pages to be more easily readable. Dyslexia is a specific learning disability that is neurobiological in origin. It is characterized by difficulties with accurate and slash or word recognition and by poor spelling and decoding abilities. Your brain can sometimes do funny things to letters. Open Dyslexic tries to help prevent some of these things from happening. Letters have heavy weighted bottoms to add a kind of gravity to each letter. You are able to quickly figure out which part of the letter is down because of this feature. It aids in recognizing the correct letter and sometimes helps to keep your brain from rotating them around. Consistently weighted bottoms can also help reinforce the line of text. The unique shapes of each letter can help prevent confusion by flipping and swapping. This program helps children who have visual disabilities. It can help with vision and it can be also used for helping children to focus. As well as being a great general purpose screen dimmer, visors overlays and point of focus feature may be assistive to users with visual perceptual difficulties such as dyslexia, photopic sensitivity syndrome, and visual stress. Whilst research shows results vary from person to person, some users may find that the use of overlays can help with fluency, eye strain, concentration, and comprehension whilst reading. In addition to the traditional overlay method, Visor also employs a point of focus feature designed to further reduce visual confusions and the tendency to skip lines. This program is also an application for accessibility and for people with visual impairments or challenges, and it is called high contrast. When you install this extension, all pages are inverted, so black becomes white and white becomes black. Press the browser action icon in the toolbar to toggle it on and off or customize your settings on a precise basis. Use a convenient keyboard shortcut to quickly change your settings while you browse. Other extensions try to change the default colors, but this ends up breaking many popular websites. Only this extension applies filters to your page that invert almost everything. The only exception is photos, which are left alone. Here we have the Google Dictionary, and it's an extension that children can use on their computers to help with comprehension, 
processing, and to help to increase their vocabulary. Foreign words are automatically translated to a language of your choice and Google Dictionary has 18 different supported dictionaries. Here is Auto Highlight. This extension automatically highlights the important content on article papers. This can be very helpful for older children or college students as well. It can help students who face processing difficulties or hyperactivity and attention deficit. It is very convenient, and it's not only an application especially created for people with disabilities, it's actually an application based on universal design that can help anyone process information in an easier way. The next slides will be containing more extensions and applications that may be helpful for students and their families. The ones that we just saw were focused on academics, processing, understanding, and they were extensions and applications that can be used at the classroom. The following will include more applications that will be helpful for daily life, collaboration between families and schools, and other useful tools that you may want to try out yourself. We use Google Drive every single day at FND. Google Drive is one of the most powerful tools when it comes to communicating with the teachers, when it comes to sharing information, and when it comes to understanding what children are doing at school. Google Drive is a file storage and synchronization service developed by Google. In addition to a web interface, Google Drive offers apps with offline capabilities for Windows and Mac OS computers, and Android and iOS smartphones and tablets. Google Drive encompasses Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Slides, which are a part of the Google Docs Editor's Office suite that permits collaborative editing of documents, spreadsheets, presentations, drawings, forms, and more. Google Calendar is great for anyone who wants organization and a way to keep track of their own personal goals. It can be synced with the schools so they can keep track of what is needed for the child. It can give the child opportunities to grow and be independent as they get alerts, understand their calendar, their schedules, and at the same time, they can be a part of that to be sure that everything is working fine. This can eventually give control and let the child lead their own schedules to keep growing independent to the maximum extent possible. Google Voice to Text We saw a very similar application for the academic piece. Thinking about how assistive technology can help the child be successful, we want to be sure that if the child has a cell phone they know how to use these applications. They can learn how to use the phone as a tool, rather than just an entertainment device, that is going to support their needs throughout life. It's going to be a life skill ability that they can embed in every part of their lives. Google Keep is similar to the previous programs. Google Keep is a note-taking service included as part of the free, web-based Google Docs Editors suite offered by Google. The service also includes Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Drawings, Google Forms, and Google Sites. Home Routines is an app that can help with remembering repeating routines. You create lists of jobs that need to be done around the same time or on the same day. These lists are called routines. Notifications appear to remind you when you need them, and when you mark each task as complete, you get a gold star. Stay Focus is a very good application too, to keep children focused on the things that they have to do so they don't get distracted by other kind of apps, games, or social applications and platforms. This is always a good idea to keep in mind that it's important to use these applications so we learn how to use them and how to help our children understand how to use them. Stay Focused is a productivity extension for Google Chrome that helps you stay focused on work by restricting the amount of time you can spend on time-wasting websites. Once your allotted time has been used up, the sites you have blocked will be inaccessible for the rest of the day. It's highly configurable, allowing you to block or allow entire sites, specific subdomains, specific paths, specific pages, even specific in-page content, videos, games, images, forms, etc. The last one is going to be Google Flashcard app. It's a powerful app to build vocabulary or to help children memorize and study. Again, these are applications that we can use for our personal task as adults, and it is always good to know that they are available and they are there for free.
it's important to go through these applications and try them out. Do your own research to bring ideas and information to the team. Work with your children at home to see what works best for their needs. We love technology and it has been always successful to introduce ideas to our IEP team because they have grown using technology and we can go into our meetings and say, this is what I see. This is how this can connect to the goal that we are writing right now in the IEP. Let's give this a try. These are important tools to bring to the table. These tools and researching them can empower families to use their voices and to understand that you are equal participants and equal members of the team. You can bring your own ideas and offer support that can always create collaboration. Here you can see our F&D family. These are the programs housed under the Family Network on Disabilities. Each program provides a unique service to a specific population. There are three PTI programs funded by the U.S. Department of Education through the Office of Special Education Programs. Poppin serves North Florida. PSN serves Southwest Florida. And PIN serves Southeast Florida. The Family Star Program, funded by the U.S. Department of Health under the Health Resources Services Administration and supports families of youth with special health care needs. F&D also has a special needs trust where we provide families with information regarding creating and supporting a special needs trust. We also do programming specific to fathers raising children with disabilities. Here you can see links for multiple downloadable resources available in various languages. You can also see some of our social media platforms. We have various pages on Facebook addressing the needs of different populations and our programs. I invite you to check out our website at www.fndusa.org for the hundreds of pages of resources and invaluable information that you can access and download at no charge. You can reach us to help you and your family by giving us a call at 800-8.2.5-5.7.3.6 and letting us know your needs. You'll be assigned to a staff person who can support you. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Visit our website for valuable resources and more information. We want to thank you for spending this time with us during this presentation. We look forward to hearing from you.